Welcome everybody. I'm Suzanne Shirley, Senior Ruby Ambassador with Plexus Worldwide, and we are on tonight to do chapters six, seven, and eight of Shad Helmstetter's What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. This has been a pretty amazing and dynamic study for our team. Um, quite an incredible thing that's happened to our team as a result. We are uh, doing a 90 day challenge with our team that includes these affirmations that we are using through the idea of Shad Helmstetter and reprogramming the brain. We're also watching inspirational video every day, a training video as well. We are reaching out to a minimum of three to five people every single day, following up on Friday. If necessary, we follow up during the week as well. We maintain relationships, uh, we build relationships online, we get on the phone, we make appointments every week to get, to get a hold with people, we're starting to make meetings. This is an accountability group for the most of us, and um, including myself, it has been very productive to implement Chad Helmstetter's ideas into our 90 day challenge. So it has been truly, I think, revolutionary to our lives. I know it has been for mine specifically, and I could say so many different reasons why, uh, which I will wait until it comes around where I can tell you the reasons as I go through this. Um, we, the first, uh, last week we discussed chapters one through five, basically the idea of reprogramming the problem that exists because we all have negative, uh, what should I say, self-limiting beliefs that we've all been given in some certain degree by other people in our lives. We are all very, very complex creatures, but we, are, we live by emotion. A lot of us are very emotional, and we're not just thinking creatures, but we're emotional creatures, and our emotions and our soul is connected to our brain, obviously. And so when our emotions are hurt or they're in, you know, um, guided or misguided by other people in our lives, we take on those self-limiting beliefs that other people project onto us. And our brain just automatically believes that. And so we've learned through Shad Helmstetter's chapter one through five that when we, are, when we hear these self-limiting beliefs that others believe about us, whether they are true or not true, most of them are completely false. Because the brain and the way that it works, it takes on that information and it is literally programmed. Even though it's false information, the brain automatically believes it. And so as a result, the actions are basically we perform what we believe. So when the brain is programmed to believe something incorrectly, it doesn't matter that it's not true. The brain automatically transfers that into beliefs and then habits and then habits through actions, and the, our actions are self-perpetuating. So basically, our self-limiting beliefs or falsehoods that we believe about ourselves are keeping us from accomplishing our dreams and our goals and our ambitions in our lives. And the only way to combat that through scientific proof and research, according to Chad Helmsetter, PhD, this is not a new idea, by the way, he's not the discoverer of this idea, it's to literally talk to the brain tell it the truth, and basically reprogram the brain to think the way that it should be thinking so that our ideas, our thoughts are literally things that our brain will capture and which are uh, transformed into beliefs. And those beliefs turn into habits and those habits turn into actions that are completely and behavior that will literally reinforce or as a result happen as a result of reprogramming. So we can act in a way directly opposed to the way that we have been programmed our whole lives by other people. And another thing that I've noticed in some of the reflections that some of you have um, said this week, which I won't get into detail here, but I'm just saying some things that I noticed were we have a, a blog, sort of um, a running journal where we're answering questions that are very reflective in nature. And people are saying that um, there are lots of things that they either A, already realized that had happened to them. It's very, they're very aware of why they have been programmed the way they have to act a certain way. But then others of us 
can't quite pin it down. We say to ourselves, well, I had a great childhood. I didn't have any necessarily massive traumatic experiences. I was loved and appreciated and respected and given every opportunity to succeed. So then why am I held back? What's wrong? But somehow there are self-limiting beliefs that we've taken on during our lives. And I don't think, I think that if we can idea, if we can pinpoint certain events that took place in our past that were pivotal to affect us in our journey to make us not believe in ourselves or to have the wrong thinking, that's amazing. And we should think about those events. But there are others of us that have not really experienced certain events that we can pinpoint that have changed us or hurt us. Um, and so I think for those of us that have not had really specific events, we've all been hurt in our lives, trust me, even I, um, I just didn't speak about all of them, quite frankly. Um, the fact is, I don't want to get off on a, too much of a psychological or a analysis of all of this. I think that the most important thing is if we can, if we can pinpoint our self-limiting beliefs, just to pinpoint them. If we can think back where they came from, that's even more helpful. But if we at least can pinpoint and write down what are those self-limiting beliefs, that's the first step in being able to counteract those beliefs with the truth, with what we want to program our brain so that we can live out our dreams and accomplish our full potential, achieve and fulfill our full potential. So, and all that being said, we are now at chapter six. We're gonna do six, seven, and eight tonight. We're going to talk about the wall. The wall is something where, well, I'll just tell you what it is. We talk to ourselves all the time. Our self-talk may be spoken words or unspoken thoughts. <clears throat> we are very thinking creatures and machines that in our minds, they never shut down. Most of our self-talk is unconscious. We are not even aware of it. At times, our self-talk comes in feelings or emotions that we can't quite put into words. And I'm sure we all can understand that. All of our thoughts, all of the pictures in our minds are always tied to something else that we already know about. And I think that's very, very important to remember. In education, the idea of when you teach a concept to a child in any classroom or one-on-one -on -one situation, that new information is always associated with prior knowledge. And that is how the brain works. So when we have thoughts in our pictures and our minds, they're always tired to pre-knowledge or pre-teaching, pre-learning, some concept that we've already learned or acquired. So every new thought that you think, think about this idea then, if every new thought that you think or acquire is associated with prior knowledge or prior thoughts or prior ideas, and those prior ideas or knowledge or thoughts are not true about you and they are self-limiting, you can think new thoughts all day long. You can think positively like Norman Vincent Peale talks about, the power of positive thinking. But as long as you have those self-limiting beliefs that those new thoughts attach themselves to, because that's how the brain works, then you have literally hit that wall. That wall is real. And you cannot get past that wall when you try to act in direct opposition to it, when you try to do something that's outside of your comfort zone, when you try to act in such a way that goes toward your dreams, you're hitting that wall because you, there is no way to get past it if every new positive, amazing thought or truth is attached to prior knowledge that self limits you. So then the answer is this, you've got to get rid of the old thoughts. You have to get rid of the old tapes that run through the head and you've got to get rid of the self limiting beliefs. So how do we do that? We erase and replace. We erase and we replace. 
Now, Shad Help Center is gonna give you how to erase and how to replace. I don't think he gets quite into it in chapters six, seven, and eight, but we are going to discuss the wall in a little bit more detail before he talks about how to erase and replace, okay? The more we believe something, the more we will accept other ideas which are similar. So the more that you think about yourself in a certain way, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, the more you will think about yourself in that same certain way. Understanding that makes it very easy to understand why it is hard to teach old dogs new tricks, okay? The longer you have thought, bought into that old thought, the truer it is. Doesn't mean that it's true, but the truer it is to you, to your brain. So <clears throat> we have literally a self-made wall, a self-made wall of negative self-talk. We have built that wall up brick by brick, one brick at a time. We've built it ourselves. It was not given to us. It was in a certain way, but we have taken on those beliefs and we've built the wall up. Most, of these pe most people who use negative self-talk are not even aware, not even aware of what they're saying to themselves. And few, if any of them, are aware of the power of programming, the negative programming they are giving themselves. Okay, so I remember in all of my studying of the Bible and going to church, speak the things that be not as though they are. So you can speak powerful things it doesn't mean that you're God and you can create things out of nothing. That's not what I mean. But that you create powerful, positive things if you can speak them, speak about them, because words are power and your brain hears them and takes them on and your brain starts to be reprogrammed. So I remember that. But I always remembered, if that's the truth about the positive side of powerful words, then the negative side of powerful words is just as powerful. So in other words, I would always tell myself, you better not say that because if you say that, it's going to happen. Like for example, I haven't had a cold yet this year. Something superstitious or whatever in me makes me knock on wood and says, you better not say that because if you say it, it will happen. Well, it's a good thing we haven't had a wreck lately. Well, you better not say that because if you say it, you're going to, tomorrow, you're going to go out and have a wreck probably. It's sort of arrogant to think in a way that our words are that powerful, but they are. And so I would quit saying the negative thing. I literally would stop saying the negative thing, but I never stopped saying it in my mind because I couldn't control that. Who can control their subconscious? Can you? No. You can control what comes out of your mouth, but can you control the thought that precedes it? The Bible says yes. According to the word of God, yes. There is this thing called the power of a sound mind. I forget if it's in Ephesians. Somebody's going to have to type it in the chat group thing down there if they remember exactly where it's at. If it's in Philippians, I forget. There is a power of a sound mind. And we can have control over our thoughts according to God's word. <clears throat> but many times our thoughts precede what comes out of our mouth, right? We, a lot of the times, can control what comes out of our mouth. Some of us more than others. <laughs> but our thoughts are something that are, it's very difficult to control our thoughts. So what are some negative thoughts that we have? We might not say the thing, but we think it. Now, some of us think it and say it. How about this? And I really don't like saying these, but I'm going to say some of them. I can't remember names. 
it's going to be one another one of those days. It's just no use. I know it does. I know it won't work. Nothing ever goes right for me. That's just my luck. I'm so clumsy. I don't have the talent. One of mine was I, I always bump into everything. I'm always bumping into, I'm like a bull in a china closet. That's what I always say to myself. Well, the more I say that, the more I am like that. It's ridiculous. I'm just not creative. I can't tell you how many times I've told Christine Weir that. You're so creative. I'm not creative. Yes, I am. I'm extremely creative in many ways. I might not be creative in the ways she is, but I'm extremely creative in my own ways. Everything I eat goes right to my waist. I can't seem to get organized. Today is just not my day. I can never afford the things that I want. I already know I won't like it. No matter what I do, I can't seem to lose weight. I never have enough time. I, I say it all the time. That's one of the things I say. I never have enough time. I never have enough time. I just don't have the patience for that. That really makes me mad. Another blue Monday. When will I ever learn? I get sick just thinking about it. Sometimes I just hate myself. I'm just no good. I'm too shy. I never know what to say. I'm too loud. I'm too bossy. I'm too overbearing. So take that I'm too shy and turn it into whatever. I'm too whatever. <clears throat> Those were mine. I'm too loud. I'm too overbearing. I never know what to say. With my luck, I don't have a chance. I'd like to stop smoking, but I can't seem to quit. Things just aren't working out right for me. I don't have the energy I used to. I'm really out of shape. I never have any money left over at the end of the month. Oh, I could just go on and on. I don't think I will. I'll just read a few more. How about that? I've never been any good at that. I never win anything. Nobody wants to pay me what I'm worth. How many times did I say that as a teacher? I'm just no good at math. That's one of my number one things. I am no good with numbers. I'm no good with math. That's what I always have said. I get a cold this time every year. You know what else I would always say? I just love to spend money. I'm all, I just love to spend money. I don't have any control with, with money. I don't know how to save money. It's terrible to say things like that. I get a cold every time this year. That's crazy. You can't trust anyone anymore. Imagine sitting. Okay. And what about the if onlys? If only that's just as bad. If only I were smarter. If only I were taller. If only I had more time. If only I had more money. If only I could get control of my food. If only I could be consistent. If only I could lose some weight. If only, if only, how many times have we, if only? Boy, howdy, do you find yourself on that page? The thing is, is it might not come out of your mouth, but it might be up here. And you're saying it. Imagine sitting down at your personal computer keyboard and typing that out to one of, uh, at one, at any one of those directions into your computer. Imagine what your computer will do, whatever you program it to do. Do you want to program your computer the wrong way? Well, that's what we've been doing. <clears throat> Here's an example. A waitress approaching the table with both arms laden with plates. And she says, and she trips on something and drops all the food. Oh, I'm so clumsy. There's an example. Another example. Let's take uh, something as common as the problem not being able to remember names. For 25 years, you may have said to yourself, I can never remember names. Then one evening you go to a party, you're introduced to somebody whose name you want to remember and you say to yourself, I'm going to remember that person's name. What happens? What happens as a result? You don't remember the name. Why? You've repro you've programmed, pre-programmed your brain when you keep saying, I never remember names, I never remember names, I'm going to go tonight and remember this name. And then 10 seconds later, you forget it because you programmed yourself before that event saying, I never can remember names. The human brain will do anything possible that you tell it to do if you tell it often enough and strongly enough. It'll do whatever you tell it to do. If you tell it the wrong thing about yourself, that's exactly what it will accept and act upon. Okay, 
The subconscious doesn't know the difference between the truth and lies. It's going to act as if it's uh, what it's told. It's going to act upon what it's told. Passing it on. Here's a really hard chapter. You ready? Raise your hand if you had problems with this chapter. This was a hard chapter to read for some of you, their parents. <clears throat> we pass on as teacher. I was a teacher. How many times did I say some of these things to my students? This is a hard chapter. Passing on our own limiting self-beliefs to our children and to people that we love in our lives. Husbands, maybe. Wives, spouses, siblings. Unless we learn differently, we end up giving the same program to, to our own children. Very well-meaning parents. Very well-meaning parents. My, my, own, my own mother and my precious grandmother. They're just humans. They're just humans. They didn't mean to say some of the things that they said. They didn't know they were hurting me. They thought they were helping me. They thought they were helping you. Your parents, a lot of them, thought they were helping you. They didn't know any better, but they were giving you limited self-beliefs. You're just not good at that. Accept it. You need to find something else that you're good at. Whoa. Your room is always a mess. You can't do anything right. You're just like your father. Is that good or bad? I will tell you this right now. I'm having an epiphany. My mother divorced my father when I was a one-year-old child. I never knew him growing up. And whenever she said that to me, you're just like your father, what in the world was I to think? I never knew him. According to her, he had wronged her in every way, shape, or form. So what was I to think? You're just like your father. Well, guess what? I was a bad person. He must be a bad person, so I'm a bad person. Why can't you be a lot more like your sister? Why can't you be more like your brother? You'll never be an artist. You'll never be an athlete. You just don't try hard enough. You never listen to me. I tell you to do something and you do just the exact opposite. You never study. Your grades are atrocious. You talk way too much. How many times do I hear that? You always hang out with the wrong kinds of friends. You don't even know where home is anymore. You are so lazy. You don't care about anybody but yourself. You're determined to cause problems. You just don't think before you act. By using the words which program the child in the wrong way, we unwittingly help the child create a self-identity which believes that what we are saying is actually the truth. We create a picture portrait of how the child sees himself or herself inside and eventually will become. <clears throat> we don't mean to do it. Our parents didn't mean to do it. We don't mean to do it. We think we're helping people. All of us have had the dreams. All of us deserve to see our dreams come true. Were it not for the brick wall of bad programming that stands in our way, each one of us, each day, would be living out more of these dreams, reaching heights of attainment that we seldom even dream of. I wrote out in the, the, the margin of this one, I said, wow. The subconscious mind is, is a sponge. It will believe anything that you tell it. It will even believe a lie. If you tell it often enough and strongly enough, it will believe it. The brain makes no moral judgments. It simply accepts what you tell it. It's literally a machine that never sleeps. It's a machine that never sleeps. It doesn't turn off. Much of our self-talk is made up of the quiet nudges of self 
doubt. I want to say that again. I want you to really hear me. Much of our self-talk is made up of the quiet nudges of self-doubt. The unspoken fears of little or grand failures and the nagging discomfort of knowing that things are not right. When we talk to our friends, it sometimes seems easier to talk about problems than about exist exciting potentials. How many of you, when you get together with your friends, all you do is talk about your problems? Well, it's because that's all we focus on. That's all our brain is in the process of thinking about is we're thinking about all the things that are limiting to us. So we talk about the wall all day long and all night long to every person that we talk to. Why can't I accept a, a compliment when someone says, you look like you've lost weight, which I heard two, from two separate people this weekend. To which I said, oh, it's, it's because I'm wearing black. It's a figment of your eyesight or something. Because I just went to the doctor and I just got on the scale and it's actually three or four pounds up from the last time I was at the doctor. And, you know, and there we go. It's the same old thing. We don't think we're beautiful because we tell ourselves whatever self ungratifying things that we're telling ourselves if we tell ourselves that we're overweight so often in our own head that when we're away from a mirror we literally think that we weigh 20 30 40 in our own minds pounds more than what we actually weigh and I remember going in front of a mirror after thinking like that for so long uh, that maybe for a day or so thinking I'm just so huge and then going in front of the mirror and I'm shocked to see that I'm not really that heavy. It's because the brain is so powerful. We're telling it that we're two ton Tessie and then we go stand in front of a mirror and we're like, oh, I guess I'm not that big. And even that is talking down to ourselves. I'm not that big. I mean, that's, that's even a put down. <clears throat> Let me think about it. We've told ourselves over and over, consciously and unconsciously, what does not work. We believe the worst first and the best last. I'm going to say something real quick. How often, does anybody relate to this? <clears throat> Your spouse will call you on the phone and say, I need to talk to you. And you say, uh-oh. Like immediately, that's what I'm thinking. Something bad's getting ready to happen. Did you lose your job? Did you have a wreck? What happened? <laughs> we think I always am expecting something bad to happen. And it's because what goes on up here, we're never expecting the good thing. And I want to, but it's hard to get past it unless we say the right thing over and over and over to ourselves. <clears throat> this can all change, my friends. It's the key to how you manage yourself. How do you manage yourself? That's the key. And how you live and manage the rest of your life. So, we must learn how to manage ourselves. And the key to doing that is to reprogram this. When you have a success or an achievement, those two things are the result of something else. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about that here in a minute. What is the something else? Failures happen as a result of something else. What or who is that something else? You. Stay with me. You must manage you. Or you will continue to fail. 
Now this is a big idea, so I'm gonna say all that again. When you achieve something, or you have a success in your life, it's the result of something else. When you fail, and you have a failure in your life, it's the result of, this, of something else. But who or what is the something else? That something else is you. So how do you make sure that you don't fail if you don't wanna fail? How do you make sure that you succeed if you want to succeed? Well, you gotta manage you. You gotta manage you. Most of what seems to happen to you happens because of you. Something that you created, directed, or influenced, or allowed to happen. And that is the law of attraction. Achievements, successes, not accidental whatsoever. They don't just happen. They were the result of something else, and that something else is you. Okay? The failures, those are the result of something else, and that something else is you. Whether you succeed or fail, it's you. So you gotta manage you. There's no other way around it. We have to manage ourselves. So five steps to self-management. These are a sequence and they go in order. This is going to control our success or our failure, these five steps in this sequence. You're either gonna control your success or you're gonna control your failure, okay? So the first one is behavior. Behavior is actions. The right series of the right actions always end up making things work better than the wrong series of the wrong actions, wouldn't you agree? How you manage yourself, what you do, how you act, each moment, each and every moment, every word that you speak, every motion that you take, and action that you take or do not take will determine how well anything in your life works out for you. What's the question? The question is this, why do we do what we do? Why do we not do the things that we know we should? or so often say and do the things that we know we should not. Why? What's the answer? We usually know what's right and what's wrong. The answer to the question is this. Behavior is controlled by our feelings. Feelings. Hmm. What? makes us do what we do is our feelings. So what are feelings? This is number two. Every action that we take is first filtered through our feelings. How we feel about something is always going to determine or affect how we do and how well we do it. A fear of flying, for example. We're afraid to fly. When circumstances demand that a, a person gets on a plane, uh, a person could lose her well-mannered temperament, stress levels triple, anxieties take over, gets sick before the flight begins. Is it the flying that makes her sick? No, it's the feelings about the flying. So it doesn't have to be your feelings of like or dislike, joy or fear. All of your feelings affect your actions, all of them. So here's another question. What causes you to have the feelings which are so much a part of you? Do they happen by accident, by chance? Uh, no, never. Feelings are created and controlled, determined and influenced by what? Number three, attitudes. Attitudes. That's the answer. Attitudes affect your feelings, which affect your behaviors. So let's dis discuss attitudes. Most of us have a combination of attitudes. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. A good attitude is essential to achievement of any kind. Attitude is everything. That was on my classroom wall. 
Attitude is everything. 10% of what life is what happens to you. 90% is your attitude about it and your reaction to it. Without a good attitude, a perspective which allows one to see the opportunities ahead and set his sights to reach them, he never will. Without a good one, he'll never reach them. So what's the question? Where do we get our attitudes? Are we born with them? Do they just appear out of nowhere? No, they don't just happen. Attitudes are created, controlled, and influenced entirely by our beliefs. Number four, beliefs. Beliefs are so powerful, people. So powerful. The belief that we have about anything is so powerful that it can even make something appear to be something different than what it really is. Belief does not require something to be true. It only requires us to believe that it's true. So we can go around believing lies our whole life long and think that they're the truth, that they're really lies. And our brain just accepts it as the truth because they are beliefs. And beliefs don't have to be true to be believed. Let's say that you believe that you had trouble making friends easily or being accepted easily and naturally by others. Since whatever you believe about yourself will end up affecting what you do, you can be sure that if you believe that you're not socially successful as you would like to be, your belief about yourself will turn out to be correct, whether it's true or not, and you will end up being socially inept. Just because you believe it about yourself. All social behavior is conditioned. Nobody is born popular or socially adept. Every social grace, skill, and comfort level that we have, successful or unsuccessful, is based on what we believe about ourselves. So if you believe that you are bugging people when you talk to them about plexus, then that is the self-limiting belief that you have taken on as the truth and your brain just accepts that to be the truth. You change the belief, you're gonna change your action and you're gonna start telling everybody about plexus. How do you change the belief though? How do you change that? What makes us believe? Do they spring beliefs spring out of nowhere? No. Are they handed to us the day of our birth? No. We create them. So one of you said that you think that you're bugging people every time you talk to people about plexus. Your positive affirmation needs to be, I never bug anyone when I tell them about plexus. I'm offering freedom and hope and health to every person whom I speak to who's desperate for answers for their lives. That needs to be your affirmation or however else you want to word it. You're never going to conquer that falsehood until you make a reprogramming statement and program it into your brain. So, which leads me to number five. Most of our beliefs are not true. Our beliefs are created and directed by what? Programming. I wanna say it again. Most of our beliefs are lies. They're not true. They're just not true. And we go around believing them anyway. So we've got to change the belief and we've got to reprogram to do it. We believe that we are programmed to believe, all right? We believe what we are programmed to believe. Our conditioning from the day that we were born has created, reinforced, and nearly permanently cemented most of what we believe about ourselves and what we believe about most that goes on around us. Programming. Programming leads to successful self-management or to unsuccessful management of ourselves, our resources, and our futures. 
So what is the sequence that we need to really think about? Programming creates beliefs. Beliefs create attitudes. Attitudes create feelings. Feelings determine actions. And actions create results. So if you want to stop getting the wrong result, you have to go back to number one and reprogram. It's the only way to do it. And how do you reprogram? With chapter nine, self-talk. And we are going to actually go over all the ways of self-talk next week. With chapters nine, 10, and 11. You wanna manage yourself better? Simple. Change your programming. Reprogram the brain. That is the first step. So with that, we're going to end the meeting and we will have our Q&A and our discussion and reflection for our team. Thank you everyone for joining us. Suzanne Shirley signing off. Mwah, peace and love.